presence, uh, Sister Lavi there insists that um, we should flow the way we want. So I've chosen to talk about vision. I've chosen to talk about focus. You know, and um, I really would want to speak to young school leavers, young job seekers. Uh, these are the people I intend to talk to, and I guess they are the people that are here. Um, first of all, I wouldn't know whether we all know the meaning of vision. We all know, because we are literate. Vision means our ability to imagine things, to imagine, you know. And life is about creativity, it's about imagination. You know, before you become something, before you achieve something, you will first of all dream it, you first of all envision it before it comes to pass. Sometimes to create whatever we need to be in life, we have to have a pathway to achieving that. And that is the vision. And when we have that vision, it is so easy to arrive at our destination. When God decided to create man in the Bible, what God did was to talk to the Holy Spirit and God the Son, Jesus Christ, and He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And they began to create and they began to form man. And man became a success. So much so that when they had created man, the Bible says that God looked at man and said that he was fearfully and wonderfully made. But there was a process, and that process was duly followed. So I encourage us, even as we are, to make sure that we dream dreams, we have vision, and we focus on the vision with a view to arriving at our destination. For us to actually pursue our vision, it starts from the day we were born. Some part of it were to actually play a role. Some others were supposed to liberate on our parents' ability. For example, when you were born, your parents followed you up. And as you grew up, your parents knew your strong points. And knowing your strong points, they began to mold you by the grace of God to that which they think um, would will be so easy for you to achieve because of your strong point. And so in schools, you remember when you were in primary school, secondary school especially, counselors came, spoke to you concerning what and what you will become. When I grow up, I want to become a lawyer. When I grow up, I want to become an engineer and all that. And by the time you realize it, you begin to see your strong points. And that informs what you will become in life. And when you become that, that you have planned to be, you are said to be a success. Sometimes when you have a vision, it becomes a bit difficult to convince people that this is actually my vision, this is what I want to become. And it's also very funny sometimes, you know, when you decide to pursue it. I'll give you a typical example from the Bible. When God decided to destroy the earth, He decided that Noah and his household will be saved. And so God called Noah and said, build yourself an ark. And he built an ark. For several years, the man was knocking away, collecting wood and knocking together. You can imagine human beings who came across Noah, watching him buy timber, knock them together for several years, while others are marrying and doing all sorts. He was busy knocking wood. And at the end of the day, the rains came, and uh, he was able to, 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 to survive with his uh, household. That is what we call vision. It may not make sense to people around you, but so long you know what you are pursuing, forget about what the next person is saying. They may say it doesn't make sense. They may say you are wasting your time. But the important thing is to remain at a place where you have discovered who you will be in life. Nothing happens by accident. You remember in the scripture again, the case of Jeremiah, God said that before he was born, that he knew he would be a prophet of two nations. And so what happened? Jeremiah turned out to be that great prophet that was prophesied. So even God knows that. 
tomorrow you are supposed to be this. And it is for you to realize that, unfortunately in Nigeria as it is today, it is so difficult for you to pursue a vision because everybody is in a hurry. We've been so impoverished in Nigeria that all we think about is now, 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 not long term. What type of job do I want? I want a job that will pay me $150,000 per month. Meanwhile, you have not asked yourself what value you are given. You have not asked yourself whether that job falls within your vision for your life. We should think long term and not short term. We should know that all that lead us is not good. Let us go back to the place where we ask ourselves what are we meant to be. I tell people that being a model is very good. And again, if you have a calling, or your vision is to become a high court judge, for example, you do not accept a modeling job, because both of them are incompatible. I'm not saying that modeling is bad, but modeling does have has to do with flamboyance, it has to do with everything uh, social. But being a judge is a very conservative job. In fact, you realize that even the friends you have, you have before you get a judge, run away from you. And for some good reasons, it's good they run away, you know. So <clears throat> I encourage you to make sure that whatever vocation you have chosen to be aligned with, make sure that you don't delve into matters, things that will distract you. What about vision? When you realize that you have a vision, it is always good to have a pathway, like I said. And then you have to concentrate. That's where the focus comes in. Make sure that you're not distracted. I have a few tidbits that will help us in achieving what our visions are in life. As a young school leader, as one who is seeking for a job, do you have a choice? Do you really have a choice? When your parents borrow to pay your school fees, you come out and you're there for two years, three years, and somebody says, Accepting this job may not be in your best interest because it does not align with your, the vision of God for your life and all that. I tell you that um, it's a difficult thing, like I said, our psyche has been destroyed in this nation. And all we think about is how we can be independent, feed our abuse, and all and all. But I assure you that if the Bible says that those who know their God will do as much, there are times you go through, the Bible says, shadow of the valley of death. It's not the real thing. You persevere because you know that you're going somewhere. Joseph went through quite a lot in the scripture, but he knew it was a time of preparation for his tomorrow, and that his tomorrow was assured, and it, it, it indeed came, and it was a success. At times, you, you, for you to actualize your vision, you need to do a few things that are not generally acceptable to you. For example, as a young school leader, you made a first class, but unfortunately you are not computer literate. All you want to do is to get a job, get a job, and that advice comes to you from the Holy Spirit and says, go and do computer lessons for, for three months. And you say, ah, to go for a diploma course with my first class. What happens is that your ego is deceiving you because you cannot imagine yourself sitting in the same classroom with people who are pursuing diploma with your first class. But God knows that you need to go through that patch to get to where you're supposed to be. Sometimes you are not employed, not because God does not want you to be employed, but maybe that is your own wilderness experience. And you need to know why things are going the way they are going. And then um, you need to prepare yourself. The tip is number one. The best jobs are not the jobs that you earn the most. People think that the job that you earn the most is the best job. Unfortunately, they get into that job, six months down the line, they are looking for another job. They begin to tell you that I don't like it, this way, I don't like it that way. Uh, my friend was complaining yesterday that the younger sister, ah, you know this job, it's so terrible. She, my sister came back from London one day and the next evening, she had to leave for Malawi. And I said, I let her resign now. Uh, let her resign, it is not that ideal job. But she takes home quite a lot of money. So what do you really want out of life? For us who are lawyers, you realize that when you work in a law firm as a lawyer, you don't earn so much. You 
not earn so much. But when you move over to the banks, you earn a lot of money. But what happens? The one who has not earned so much money in legal practice is learning and learning and learning. And what happens is that at the end of time, that person will leverage on that knowledge. And whoever thinks she, he or she has made so much money marketing and getting customers, bank deposits and making a little money, within a short period of time, you overtake the person. And that person who is in the bank will begin to tell you, I'm tired of this thing, running after people for money. And then the person begins to build a new career. By that time, you have gone far. You know, so the best paying job is not the best job. The best job is the one that will lead you to your vision, your destination. And most of the time, that job is the one that teaches you and allows you to learn. That is the one that is the best job. Number two, you, you may rely on man no man. You know, in Nigeria, it's all about man no man. For people, we say him and man. You know, when you know somebody, or you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. But I was talking to somebody and I said, there's hardly any person in Nigeria that's not rich. I'm not boasting. Because if I don't know Jonathan, I know somebody that knows somebody that knows Jonathan. You know, so at the end of the day, I'll still get what I want. Praise the Lord. But that is not important. You may win a contract that you never dreamt you would win by man no man. But man no man will not perform that contract. So you need dexterity. You need to learn. You need to be at a place where hard work is your watchword. You know, you need to be diligent in all your ways to be able to excel. So man no man is good, but it will only help you to get to some point and the, the rest will be integrity, dexterity, hard work, you know. Proverbs 22, 28 says, Seest thou a man who is diligent in his ways, he shall be before kings and not be men. When you are diligent, when you are hardworking, they may not like you, they may not like the way you dress, they may not like the way you talk, but you are, the result you achieve speaks volumes for you. And so you will continue to excel. When man no man is your job, what will keep you in that job is that which you are able to offer. And that is what every other person will see. It's the same thing with marriage. You know, beauty can get you a husband if you're a woman. But then a year, two years down the line, the man ceases to see that beauty. All the man sees is my wife cannot, my wife cannot do this, my wife cannot do that. And you begin to see that that infatuation begins to go. And you begin to wonder whether this man really loved you before. It is because he loved you for the wrong reasons. And that's the same thing when you get a job. When you get a job, for you to keep that job, it has to be for the virtues you have expressed in that marriage, and in that job. The Bible says that what you sow is what you reap. Whatever you put into your job, is what comes out. Garbage in, garbage out. There are no two ways about it. And if the system condones you, that means the system will join you in going down. You know? So you must know that whatever you sow is whatever you reap. And every human being on earth has been endowed with a gift. God has endowed us with a gift. There's no human being that doesn't have a gift. And the Bible also says that your gift makes way for you. Your gift makes way for you. So when you are in an office, the way to keep that office is to make yourself indispensable. Make yourself indispensable by the things you do and how you do them. Again, for you to be able to pursue your vision, you need also to partner with God. Because above all things, having done all things, it is for you to stand. God is the one that knows who we are. He is the one that empowers us. The Bible also tells us that promotion does not come from the East, it doesn't come from the West, but it comes from God. So you really need to partner with God. When you're seeking it for a job, when you're seeking any promotion, anything, God has to be your partner for it to work. And it is very important. And the Bible also tells us that it is about time and chance. And who occasions it? It is God. 
What about time? Time, our times are in his hands. Chance is the one that also enables it. So we must know that God is the author and finisher of our faith. God is the Alpha and the Omega. God is the one who will actually cause the increase to come, even as we have walked and walked and walked. Be yourself when you are in a job. Be yourself when you are in a job. Be yourself when you are in a job. A lot of people do eye service. Now, our guy is coming, our guy is coming. You run. You will be the first person to go and report your body. But unfortunately, your ogre at work knows it. He knows the one that is performing and the one that is not performing. It's not by eye service. Forget eye service. Eye service, like I said, you can come into an institution for the first three, three months. You're talking well, you're saying all the right things. But the boss is watching, your colleagues are watching. And sooner than later, result will come. Humility is another factor. Humility. You need to be humble when you are in a job. You need to be humble when you are in a job. It is only humility that will allow you to learn. It's only humility that will allow you to go to your junior in the office and ask questions. It's only humility that will make you empty yourself before your colleague and say, I need to know how this works. And you will learn. And whatever knowledge you have, nobody will take it away from you. A lot of people are not given to being humble. And of course, the Bible tells us that God receives the proud and gives grace to the humble. You know? So we need to be humble in our workplaces when we finally get that job. We need to live, uh, be at peace with all men. And when I say all men, all men, all women, we need to be at peace. When people talk about you in your absence in the office, all they remember of you is ah, that guy, wonderful guy. If he was here, this thing wouldn't have happened at all. And so you need to be at peace with everybody. Especially for Christians, I don't know how many of you belong to house fellowships, but in my own house fellowship, at some point, I realized that the prayer points we were entertaining mostly were, I need a job, I need a change of job, I need this, I need this. You see somebody give testimony today that uh, he has finally gotten that job. Three months after, my brothers, brethren, help me pray. I need, I need, there's this publication that in the paper, I must get that job, and all and all. So, and what people do not realize is that the Lord will always be greener on the other side. Therefore, you must see the other side as greener than where you are. You know? Meanwhile, you have been called into an office, and it is for you to prove yourself and move to the next level. You know? Let's avoid that. Frequent change of job should not be encouraged because really, you will just be moving this way. You're not moving this way. You think you're moving this way, but you're not moving up. In everything you do in life, your appearance matters. In everything you do in life, your appearance matters. If I want to know who somebody is, I'll just look at how the person is dressed, how the person looks. For a lot of ladies, you wear mini. And if you wear mini, you leave it at mini now. When you now see a man that you have respect for, you begin to drag it. Pull it down. Why are you pulling it down? You're the one that cut your tail off, cut it with short. You know? Be yourself. If you decide to wear mini, wear mini. But again, your appearance matters in anything you do. Your appearance matters. The way people talk to you is the way you come across to them. I remember one time, a long time ago, I was with my brother outside the country and we was in London. And I saw this girl with my me, very short one. And I, I spoke to him, I said, hi, this is your country. If I were Georgia, this one comes and says I was raped. I would say, good for you. My brother was leaving. Uh, because I was coming from Nigeria, I was uh, I was a villager. You know, but the truth is that when I see a girl who is wearing mini showing off here, and she begins to complain that you see that guy the way he spoke to me, he's speaking to you that way because he came across as a prostitute. You know, and that's why he had to speak to you that way. And that is the truth. Image is everything to God and to us. God wanted to create man, and God said, "Let us make man in our image." and in our likeness. And that is how come he created us. For some products, they sell more than others because the advertisement is right, the packaging is right, the inside is wrong and nonsense. So let us know that even in our search for jobs, even in our quest to keep our jobs and get to our desired destination, we all need to know what the vision is, write it down, make it clear. 
and always breathe on it. Focus on it. Your eyes must be on the ball. Thank you for your time.